Okay, everybody, I'm at today's job site. Um, you're seeing a gravel road, and this road literally goes a quarter mile deep. It's actually a public road, but it's privately maintained. The township that in the county I live in, the township actually doesn't want to deal with maintaining the road because it's a gravel road so the residents who live along this road are actually required to do their own maintenance but anyway um, basically today's operation consists of power brooming all the gravel that's on the sides of the road from snow plowing over the winter time to remove the gravel from the roadway well, from the shoulders, and basically, um, sorry, I'm out of wind because I'm actually kind of walking up a hill here. But um, basically, I got to power broom all the gravel back on the road, and then if I need to regrade the road quickly, I have to run back, grab my uh, loader with the rear blade, and run up and down the road. Hopefully I don't put a lot of thatch on the road because then I got to also clean up the thatch. But anyway, yeah, let me jump in the truck here and I'll get the video rolling and give you insight how long the road is. Okay, I'm headed down towards the end of the road and you really can't see much of the shoulder but there is approximately three to five feet of gravel on each side of the road from the snow plowing over the winter time. Um, yeah, it takes about an hour, hour and a half for me to clean up each shoulder. And then, like I said, if I have to run home to get the rear blade to scrape the road. Sometimes this road has bad potholes in it, but I don't see that happening on, it, on here. But, uh, yeah, a little bit right there, but maybe I can smooth that over with the power boom itself. Uh, here there's sometimes some bad potholes too. I didn't really notice the truck bouncing over it, but Yeah, this is today's operation uh, It'll take me a couple hours by the time everything is said and done so um, Yeah, but anyway Here's the end project and Like I said, it's about a quarter mile long so Anyway, let me get to it, and I'll start the video up when I start uh, power brooming the shoulder. Okay, I'm going to try and fill some void here, because apparently I didn't have any audio going while I was uh, power brooming stuff. So, yes, it's a bonus. You don't have to hear the engine running, but... Instead, you get to hear me, because otherwise it's going to be an awfully boring video. But anyway, um, a lot of you have noticed that I've been posting a lot of power brooming videos. Well, in our area, um, we actually have a lot of situations where there's gravel driveways and gravel roads and so forth. And... Word got out a long time ago that I have power broom service because I actually have two power brooms. As you're seeing, this this power broom has been used in a bunch of the videos. Um, I do have a second power broom. It's only a four foot. It's actually a John Deere 50 or 51. I'm not really sure, but um, yeah, it mounts on one of my John Deere's and. I haven't really been using it because this is a 60 so I get an extra 10 inches of use out of this machine so that's why I normally use this one now. Um, I keep my 50 around because you never know if something breaks and I need an emergency power broom. I also have my 50 inch because I do have uh, customers where their sidewalks are not 5 feet wide for winter time. So I can actually put that 50 inch on for sweeping power, uh, sweeping sidewalks during the winter time when it comes to minor snowfall accumulations. But anyway, um, yeah, this, this job, the customer has been actually a long time customer or the customers, I should say. 
it's kind of one of those uh, situations where it's almost like a subdivision um, grouping of neighbors that uh, maintain the right away of the road. Normally, I come in and I do the um, spring cleanup, if you want to say, or the power brooming of the right away of the roadway. Um, each neighbor is responsible for their own driveway, for say. If they would ask me, I would come in and also do their driveway for an additional charge. Um, it is one of those things where the, they've talked about it and it's never really gone anywhere, but they do want the right of way to the road road all done. So this customer here particularly, he's the only one who has a blacktop driveway. But right here, I'm kind of hung up on a little mound. Um, the tractor kind of stopped. I'm going now again. But uh, yeah, it's... It's just one of those things that I get a lot of calls for power brooming of gravel and so forth out of lawns. And I also do use my power broom for thatching lawns because as you can see or as you're going to find out throughout the video, this machine does dig out a lot of, um, a lot of thatch out of the lawn. So it's good for a dethatching machine. But um, right there you just seen a windrow of... Um, what the machine looks like after I had have, I have gone past. Um, it digs a lot of gravel out of the lawn. It's, the video footage don't give it justice on how much this thing actually digs out when it comes to cleaning, a, cleaning the gravel out of the lawns. Yes, it does leave a little bit here and there if the machine don't catch it. A lot of times I'll try and go over the area two times. I'll do like half a swipe. Um, and then I also sweep some of the actual roadway just to push gravel over further. Um, this video isn't in its entirety. Um, I did skip a couple of, uh, if you want to say, uh, segments because it's repetition or lesser terminology. Here I'm getting, I'm actually running into a problem and it's actually quite common when you're working downwind from the machine. You're actually noticing that a lot of thatch is flying back towards me. And between running the camera, running the tractor, and controlling the hydraulic levers for operating the machine, it actually is, it was a, a challenging task if you want to say um because you don't really see the controls that i'm having to deal with but i'm actually having to control the power broom up down left and right because if i'm angled too much i'm kicking the gravel onto the other side of the roadway so i actually have to watch what i'm doing Right here, you actually, I wanted to just see what it's actually like from my perspective and the drive shaft I actually did get in slow motion here. Um, this is one thing that people don't realize when machinery like this is running. That little drive shaft actually has approximately 20 horsepower's worth of torque behind it. And you never want to get close to those drive shafts. I have a horror story that I could go into uh, on that subject where I was severely injured by uh, basically a PTO shaft. But you never want to get close to those shafts because they are not forgiving and they will injure and maim you. Um, I was lucky enough that I still have all my body parts. It was my hand. But... Um, we won't really get too much into that, but those drive shafts are not forgiving. Even the drive shaft that you're seeing spinning there, you never want to get close to those. I, anybody who works with me knows what I had gone through, and if I ever see anybody close to one of those shafts, I get severely angry with the person because... Um, it's basically you're you're asking for trouble. So you ever see it running a piece of machinery that has a drive shaft similar to that? 
take my advice and stay away from it because the end result is never good. But um, as to the footage now you're seeing, um, I didn't quite have the camera widened out enough, so you're not quite seeing enough of the power room in operation, but um, I was trying to, here I'm actually trying to show how the thing actually is cleaning the gravel area and it's actually getting down pretty good and here again i got it in slow motion um that drive shaft actually is spinning a lot faster than what you realize um but anyway um yeah it's my company ends up doing a lot of this uh power brooming service right now um I'm in the midst of uh, a lot of power broom service. Once I'm done with that, basically I go straight into my lawn cutting. I am planning on doing a couple spring cleanups this uh, weekend. So hopefully I can get them all knocked out. Um, I'll probably be doing five spring, five, uh, spring cleanups with a large one mixed in a bunch. But I'm hoping tomorrow I actually I have a second guy that's going to be working with me. And if we can, usually me and him, we can knock out a lot of jobs together. So I'm hoping that he can uh, come in and help knock some stuff out. But uh, yeah, it's uh, like I was saying, the power broom service. If you're new to the industry and you're familiar with, with the power broom, um, especially if you're familiar with a tractor mounted power broom. I actually recommend that you do actually acquire one because not a lot of companies have them. Um, I'm one of about, I know of about 15 landscaping companies that I don't often talk to, but I know of them and not a single one has one. Um, I do know a guy who does have one, but he don't use it like I do for spring cleanups. He basically sticks to do clearing snow with his, and that's about it. Um, he basically don't have a lot of time to deal with uh, the gravel, even though there's not really a lot of time required when you actually do clean these up. Altogether, um, I think I had about four to five hours invested in this job. Um, it sound, it don't sound like a lot, but, um, the reason why there's, there is room in this industry is because one, not a lot of guys have them. And if you know how to operate this broom properly, there is money to be made. Um, one, because there's not a lot of guys who have them, but two, because, if you know how to operate the broom properly, you can make money, but the broom is a costly machine to maintain because bristles on these brooms are not cheap. Um, typically, I have to replace, as soon as I'm done with this spring, this machine will get a new head put on it. And the head can be anywhere. I'm not sure what this machine is because I haven't had it that long, but my other machine... It can cost in the ballpark, I'm not even sure, but it's under $500, but over $300. So, um, this power broom, because it has a little bit bigger head, might go in the five to $700 range. So, that's one thing. If you do buy a power broom, you do have to be prepared for that cost. And you have to charge accordingly for the power broom service. So, but it is something that, to venture into I will let everybody know that when you do acquire a power broom to the very first time you use it to almost immediately try and get an extra set of bristles because when the bristles do go out which they do eventually burn out you may have to wait for that order for that that uh, bristle head so if you have it on hand as the bristles wear out you can simply just replace your bristles. Um, these bristles are supposed to actually be, I think, eight inches long, and I probably have 
about six inches right now on them. So I have about two inches of wire. Um, when you get about 50%, that's when you really want to start thinking about replacing them. So, like I say, I'm getting close, and that's why I say probably at the end of this spring season, I'll probably replace them for winter time so I have a fresh uh, set of bristles on here. But on that note, I think the video is going to be coming close to an end here. And um, I didn't get a chance to get any footage of uh, cleaning up the thatch that was in the driveway. Um, I tried getting some video and it was just way too windy. Um, basically, I was making a big dust bowl and getting the footage of cleaning it up was nearly impossible. I just got done with all the power brooming. If you'll notice that shoulders look like as if they were raked, if you want to say. Um, kind of got to bear with me here because I'm on a curve, but once the truck swings around, you'll notice that there is a lot of thatch in that in the roadway. Well, I got to leave the job site to run and get my bagger unit so I can bring the thatcher attachment out with the bagger unit and loosen up the gravel which in turn will suck up the grass with the bagger unit so um, this is a one of the two part process like I had said I may have to bring my rear blade out I'm not sure but it's looking like as if I can get away with just sucking everything up so um, yeah I'm leaving the job site so I can run home it's like a 15 mile drive so i'm way out in the country but anyway so until i get back i touched base a little bit on this about the pto shaft um you're seeing a quick picture of my arm my arm was almost twisted off by one of those pto shafts and basically i had to have reconstructive surgery on my arm i'm lucky to have this arm um, my, you see the scar? Well, the scar goes from my forearm all the way to my wrist. And it was a bad situation. As I spent almost a week in the hospital and I had to have about a year's worth of therapy in order to regain use of my arm. So when I say that nothing ever good comes out of getting close to one of those PTO shafts, I can't stress it enough. So if I learned anything that I tell anybody is to stay away from those shafts because they are very dangerous. Here I'm going to throw in a quick uh, shot of the other power broom I have which is the John Deere 50. I basically was needed to sweep a parking lot where snow piles were in the spring of the year. But anyway, yeah, this is some quick footage of what the my John Deere 50 can actually do. This one actually has wheels on the back side for height adjustment, which does come in handy where my other power broom don't have it. Um, like I said, this is, this is a much smaller power broom. This power broom also has been modified so that, um, basically I had removed the front flap because the front flap causes a rollover effect inside the power broom. So if you do happen to buy this type of power broom, um, the John Deere dealerships will not recommend that you remove this flap. But um, when you, I've seen other guys where they do remove this flap. Um, basically, this flap comes on at a 45 degree angle on the front of the machine, and it by removing this flap, it allows the stuff so it does not roll over inside the machine. Once I had removed that flap and reconstructed the power broom, I had gotten about 100% better end result out of uh, sweeping with this power broom. So it is something to think about if you do buy this power broom. But um, I just wanted to touch base with this broom because it is a broom that I still can use in that. I do still have it. 
Um, it actually works comparable to my other power broom. Um, it is a shaft driven power broom just like the other one. So like I had said, stay away from the shaft. Uh, don't need to be injured from that stuff. It can happen in a split second and you won't even notice it until it's done. But on that note, um, I just threw this video in here so I could close out the video if you want to say, but um, seeing I couldn't uh, get footage of the cleanup, like I had said that other, the other job, it was just way too dusty um, for me to even get worthwhile footage of uh, what the end result is cleaning up that gravel uh, with the thatch that was in the, in the gravel. But the end result was I did get the job all completed for the day, so. But on that note, I'm gonna cut this video out here, and if you like the videos, like always, uh, hit the like button. If you wanna subscribe to the channel and catch more videos like this that are groundskeeping related, um, I'm gonna try to change it up from day to day. I know the last week or so I've been getting power broom videos in there but that's what I do a lot of in the springtime is power booming so um, yeah if you uh, like the channel like I had said hit the like button if you want to subscribe and see more footage like this hit the subscribe button and on that note I'm gonna cut, cut out here and hope to see you on the next video so anyway Alright, thanks for watching.